Okay, Tim. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, lads, for having me again anyway. Um, I'm going to tie a book done, which you're coming off at the moment. And the hook is a sedge caddis. And it's barbed, but I just pinched the barb off it. I've got tan thread uni, Ato. And I'll start behind the eye. Good stuff. Take the thread down to the bend. The bend there. And the tail, I've got some moose mane. And I'll just pull two off. Line them up. On the bear hook. I just pull it and they'll sit up. If they're a little long, just pull them back through. Then I'll put one underneath just to kick them up. And then some people put a figure of eight through them, but all I do, I'll get the tiniest little bit of resin and put there, put the torch on it, and they stop open all the time then. It just says figure of eight through, and they, they'll stop there then. Cut these three quarters of the way up. And the next, the body was uh, David Jedley got me some owl feathers, what he picked up out of an aviary, what they breed, or I haven't got one left. But when I come down to you, Derek, the other week, um, what's his name? Bob was selling the stuff off. Um, I'll pick these feathers up with a perfect colour. Cut two fibres. Attach just behind the tail. And then work your way. Up with your thread. Cut your way stuff. And I'll just take the thread back down a little bit just to take the body just slightly, not too much. A brook done is quite large, to be honest. Probably one of the largest flies, I would think. Tape your body and just grab your aqua pliers. And then put you in turns, just come up the hook towards the eye.
when you get about two mil away from the eye, just tie off. Cut your waist. Next. If you uh, select yourself four CVC feathers and just marry, marry them up. Can you hear that noise, Dick? Yeah. What is it? It's either somebody's got a pacemaker or it's a loud clock. A few people haven't got their microphones turned off, so I'll, I'll just mute them now. And then if anybody want, wants to ask Tim a question, you just unmute yourself and ask the question. So I've selected four CDC feathers. Married them up, and you just want to be just a touch longer than the bend of the hook. Charlie, not very well. One, two, three. Uh, yes, I yes, yeah. I yeah, yeah. Take a couple of turns behind the CDC. So we end up like so. Cut your waist off. And then tidy your head up. Don't worry about the feathers lying back for a minute and then I've got a, a rust, uh, rusty natural gun cock hackle just take yourself a feather strip the bottom off Cut your waist off. And tie him in just in front. I always get the tip and pull it back and tuck it in again just to secure. Cut your waist off. And then if you hold your CDC and take a turn behind completely, you can put two if you want. And then come in front, work your way down towards the eye. And tie you a feather in. Cut your waist off. And then whip finish. What size hook is that, Tim? 
it's a six here. They're quite big. They're quite big hooks, to be honest. Uh, it's a sixteen, yeah. Size sixteen. Oh yeah. Why have I only got a little picture? Anybody know? Tony, if you go to uh, if you go to Tim's uh, uh, icon at the top, his picture at the top, and then click on it, there's there's a little blue box with three dots. If you click on the three dots, it'll give you a drop a drop down list. So go on to that and click on pin, and that'll make Tim as your main screen. Wait, it isn't. Happening. Did you get that? Yeah, but it ain't happening. I don't know what you're doing wrong then. I've got an iPhone. Oh, if he's on, if he's on the phone, it might not do it. No. No, it's it, it's not. Never mind. I can always watch it back on your channel. You turn the phone round so it's long ways. It'll fill it'll fill the screen. No, it hasn't been. It hasn't done that. All oh, right. <laughs> I've tried that, been there. I don't know. I, I've, got it, I've got it on my laptop, Tony. All right. Just if it's on your laptop, you'll have Tim as a main screen if you pinned it. Yeah. And you'll have across the top, you'll have all the different uh, participants. Well, that's all right if you've got a laptop. Yeah. <laughs> Never mind. Well, so I've tied the ackling like so, and then just get your your scissors and take out the bottom up, not too short. And that'll just sit better on the on the surface film. And that's a pattern I use all the time for a book done. Lovely. Tim, what was the big feather you used for the body again? I knew he was going to ask me that. Yeah. I haven't got a clue. <laughs> it's I had there was six in a pack when I come down to the yeah, yeah, yeah. It's turkey. Turkey. Is it turkey? Is turkey. it okay? Yeah. Mottled, yeah, turkey. Turkey. Or the underwing of um a peacock. Yeah, it could be, yeah. But it's probably a turkey. Well, it's the perfect colour. So that's the brook done. Lovely. And that is a size 16. I say they're quite large. A brook done is large anyway. You all see that? Yeah. yeah. Nice. Yeah. Perfect. The next one's a little pearly butter merger. A what, sorry? A pearly butt olive emerger. Mm -hmm. And this is a size 16. You can time in 18s if you want. You time in 14s if you want to. We'll do a 16. And this is on a K14A. And that also a barb, just pinch the barbs down the tall, the money micro barbs. So, I'll take me through behind the eye. One, two, three, four, five, six. One more. And then just come back up halfway. Halfway, so we're there. And then CDC, same again, just find yourself. 
It depends how good you see your seeds. If it's good seed, you see, you might want three. If it's a bit poor, just get four. It's getting harder to get good seed, you see, to be fair. Just marry, marry the tips up. So we lined them up, length of the hook, pinch and loop. If they do look a little bit long, just pull them back a little bit. We'll tie them in, tie them down. Get your, if you get your scissors and just come over the top, slow. When you get to the end of the CDC, when you've covered the CDC, this is um, Peacock and Orange Unimiler. And it's a small. Take yourself a piece around the back of the thread. And if you face the orange away from you and pull it round, the orange will face you when you come back. And then when you wind, the pearl will be the right way. Mm -hmm. We tie the miler in and come down round the bend quarter way and then come back up Just put your thread out of the way and then wind your miler in to make a small butt on the end probably four maybe five And then just wind your thread back and tie your thread off, uh, tie your miler off. Cut your waist off. The next, the body is blue winged olive. And it's that one. It's the same to me. To be honest, it's the same as a super fine. Just dub, uh, dub yourself some uh, dubbing on. Then slide him up. And you only want a thin needle to start with and then build it up. So your body tapers. Add a little bit. That's the body. Well, it's the same ackle again, which is the rusty done. And it doesn't matter if the ackle's a bit long because it's just it's just acting as legs. The good side facing me, and you tie in behind the CDC to, and then in front of the CDC. Same again, pull your tag back. Don't be frightened to rip, pull everything back. Cut your waist off. 
And then same again, just do a couple of turns behind the CDC. And then one, two in front. I messed that up. Yeah, come on. Got it. I'll come a little bit close to the eyes here. And cut your waist off. And think I'm in for just trim it off. Put everything back. What thread do you use, Tim? I use nearly everything I use you need to be to be honest, Ato. Um I, I quite like it to be honest. I'll get on with it. If I'm tying, sometimes I use nano silks or Well, not very often. I mainly use uni thread. So the same again. Cut your thread. Turn him over. And just tr trim your rackle underneath again. Not too short. Because you want to sit the legs. And that's a nice little pearly bottom merger. I've come a bit close to the eye with that one. And that's that one. Any questions? Nope. Don't be frightened to ask. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I got one, Tim. Oh, can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Um, when you say the good side of the feather, I mean I'm quite inexperienced. What do you mean? What do you mean by the good side of the feather? If if you look at a feather when it's lay on the cape, the good side will always be facing up, the shiny side. Gotcha. So if you if you look at the cape, that that's the good side, and then the so, underside yeah. is. Underneath. So I always tie always tie in the good side facing me. Did you get that? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Um, yeah. If you're fishing a dry fly, yeah. Do you have the last couple of feet of your tippet sinking or floating? Floating. Floating. Yeah. Do you put muslin on your fly line? I use mud. Do you? Yeah. I think some people use muslin on the, the actual fly line, don't they? Yeah. Yeah. Mo, mo, some people do. I use a long leader, like 16 foot leader, to be honest. Oh, well. Yeah. I'll tie myself up in knots with that. I'll, I'll use um, a 14 foot or 15 foot, uh, 14 foot lead, uh, 12 foot tapered leader, and then I'll put four foot on. Right. And I, I just use Stroft. Do you? Yeah. Right. I'll use uh, 0 0.10. Uh, 0, 0 0.12. And I'll put four foot of that on. That's all I use. Right. Thank you. Right. What's the breaking strain on that then, Tim? Um, it's probably... Um, three, three, and between three and three and a half, depending on. So, so if you said 0 0.12 on some, it'll be 
three and a half and no point one two on some other on Stroft. I think it's three pounds supposed to be. That's enough, isn't it? Yeah. It's supposed to be anyway. But I found um I'll be honest, I found trout hunts are really strong to be fair. Very strong, but it's expensive. That's the only trouble. It is very, very expensive. I mean, I think fluorocarbon's about 22 could have rolled in it. Something like that. Have you ever used that X line? No. Because although it's expensive to buy, you've got to buy 600 metres, it's yeah. 30 pound. But it works out quite cheap. Is that the Berkeley stuff, is it? No. It's got a big red X on it. It's carp fishermen use it. Oh, okay. Um, I know a couple of people that use it, but they're still water fishing. Yeah. I st I'm still using all this, huh, to be honest. I'll, I'll be honest. I've, the, the last few, um, I've been using uh, Varivus from Partridge. Oh, okay, that's, yeah. That's as good as anything, to be fair. The type of glazers are excellent. And they do different, uh, they do weight forwards as well on the type of leader. Why do you use such a long leader then? Well, the further you can get away from the fish, the better. Yeah, ain't gonna spook them, are you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you that is a long leader, Tim. Fair play, isn't it? That yeah. Really, uh, yeah. yeah. You're keeping your fly line away from them. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and you got yourself, in it? Yeah, yourself as well. But ma yeah, most, ma mainly you fly line as well. Uh, and it depends on the, you know, you couldn't fish that on a, a small brook, could you? No, no. You're talking a good river for that. Aren't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you 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 wouldn't fish that on a, on a little brook like the Clun or somewhere, you know what I mean? No, no. <laughs> You probably only want to step, but then you'd have a smaller rod. Yeah, true. Yeah. Right. Some of you probably see me tie some most of this. But the next one, all black. The hook is a K14A again, my favourite hook, and it's a size 20. Can you all see that? Yeah. Right, threads black, uni, ato again. Just beyond the eye, one, two, three, four, five, six. Cut your waist. And the body and the tail, you can use any, uh, any sort of yarn, to be honest. For this, but this is. Can you see that poly yarn? Yeah. It's black, and it comes like so, in a strip. I bet you can't get that now. They yeah, probably can't. Um, you can use um, what's the other one? Um, Van yards do it. Wings. Yeah, same sort of thing as that. Yeah. Or uh, what's it do? One, don't they? Uh, Fly time boutique, some yeah. silly, some other. <coughs> Excuse so me. If you get your um, yarn and split it, so we have got two halves. And then if you take and twist it. Opposite ways in your thumb and finger, 
and then push together, it will twist. It's not the easiest thing to do, but it does twist. And then lay it on the top of the hook, hold everything together, and tie them in. And if you take your thread down, not on each two mil, it's a little midge pattern. And there's your tail. Cut your waist off. And then we've got some aero wing in white. Cut your a piece of arrow wing off and double it. And if you if you lie it on the top the same way as the tail, like so, I'm gonna come back up a little bit first, like so, and then pinch and loop. two or three turns and then twist and then figure of eight and there's your, your wings are in and secure the next there's only three three ingredients and again you can use any but this is red and it's Hemingsway and it's Peacock Dubby and it's in red and you want the tiniest bit dub on And then the same again, if you figure of eight with your dubbing on. And that's all you need. And then we'll finish. Quick thread. And if you hold your two, your arrow wing up, your two wings together, cut off. And then I just put some gink on the, the wings. Can you see that? Yep. Yeah. And that's a little midge pattern. You can tie them smaller if you want to, but 22 small enough. Uh, 20 small enough. It works as well. Any questions? Tim, yeah, can I ask one, please? Yeah. Uh, I've never fished anything that small. How would you fish that? As a, as a dry, uh, same as a dry. Yeah. Yeah. I just put a bit of geek on the top of the wings. Okay. And on the top of the tail. Okay. And that's it. And it'll sit flat in the surface film. Okay. Yeah. I've not been able to tie it on the leader. <laughs> Can I see I, it? it? Yeah. To be, to be fair, the, the K148's got quite a big eye, to be fair. Mm -hmm. It's not massive, right? But you, you, uh, you can see it. Well, for me to see it, we need to be the size of Kidderminster. <laughs> <laughs> well, that worked well. Uh, that worked well last year for me. Evening, everybody. Fine, mate. Right. Mm -hmm. All right, Paul. All right, Ian. Right. So, that's a little midge pattern. Mm.
And would you use the same setup, a big long leader? Yeah. Very fine tippet for that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You tip it, you tip it, it just gets. You, you get experience will learn you that the finer the tip it and the, where you can get to that limit of yeah. where you're on the limit with it or the snapping or you land the fish. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? That's, that just comes with experience. Right. Uh, I have got next. Who can be this? Change some threads. Anybody got any questions while I'm changing this? Are you coming down to Gwent, Derek? Yeah, me and me and Pete Flavin are coming. Oh, great. I Should think be uh, Pete Eiley's coming as well. Yeah. Yeah, be a good day, I think. Yeah, yeah, looking, looking forward, forward to it. To it. Yeah. I don't know yeah, if any of the, the other guys are coming as well. Cliff Townsend's coming with his missus, and then my neighbour Bill across the road, he's coming as well. Oh, nice. Oh, should be all right. You can get a ticket, you know, a discount yeah. ticket. Yeah, fibre off. Yeah. It only lasts till today, though. Yeah. No, I'm only joking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Is it on the 12th of May? 11th of, 11th of June. 11th of June? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I can't make it. Prince Albert have got an open day on the 12th. I think it who has. Prince Albert. Oh, I'm sure it's here. Is Gareth gone? No, I'm still here. 11th of June, yeah. yeah. It's the 11th, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. The uh, early bird discounted tickets are available till the 1st of May. That's Sunday. Sunday. Yeah, and then they'll yeah. be going up by a fiver. So if you've yeah. got them, good yeah. on you. Yeah. <laughs> I thought they'd all order them then, Gareth, when I said that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're all right, Tim. You get you uh, you're doing some hard work for us. Yeah. I'm looking forward to it, to be honest. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Um, right. This is a little deer, olive deer. Upright. Yeah. Hook okay, is a LSD2 in a size 16. Thread behind the eye. Cut your waist off. And then take your thread back off where you've where you've come down. Hey, Dick, um, you know the lad who come down the club um, from America? What's his name? Eric. He's, yeah, he's got me uh, one of them stackers. Has he? Yeah, he sent me a picture last night. <laughs> yeah, I think so. Well, he said he, he sent me a picture. He said, I've got them. So, yeah. well, if, if you pop him in Saturday, I'll, I'll ask him to drop it in. I don't, I don't think he's back. 
Oh, is he still over there, is he? Yeah, I think he's there for three weeks and he only went. Uh, yeah, I think he's there for another fortnight, I think, that, to be fair. Um, dear air is nature spirits. Cut yourself a little clump off. And spread it in your fingers and just pull it under fur out. Pop it in the stacker. That's that. When you've lined the tips up in the stacker, I usually make it the length of the hook and just pinch. Don't pull, pinch again. So you've got two and then pull down and then tighten up. And then same again, cut your stalks off, that's a taper. And then tidy up. Then cock de Leon. You want get yourself six or seven strands, line them up, pull them off. Line them on the top of the hook, on the side of the hook, sorry, and then just pull and they'll pull around onto the top of the hook. If the tail's a little bit long, just pull it back through. Till you get the right length of tail. Or you think the right length of tail. And then wind down to the bend, one underneath, to cock them up. And that's that. Cut your waist off. And then... I've got yellow strip quill. Ten yards have run out of them. Yeah. They got on, they had on for a few. I don't know what's happened. I'll tell you who um, um, Wojciech will have them, uh, Polish quill will have them. But on that van yards, I had gone for a bit, for, to be honest. I don't know why. And then tie uh, the quill. I always tie it. There's a black line on the quill. I always have that facing up. And then tie your quill in. Bring your thread up. And when you get to where it started taper, just run back down so it tapers. And your ackle pliers. Um, where is it? You can put a touch of super glue on that. On this one, on the um, thread to um, stick the quill to. I use the gel super glue. Yeah, I've got both here, to be honest. Just be careful because they will split and rip. 
the future where we ended. And then just touching turns. I do use yellow thread as well, so you can't see if you do miss a little bit. And then tie off a quill. Cut your waist off. I don't really notice. So when I'm cutting, I always push my thread with my finger and then cut. There's nothing worse than leaving it cutting your thread. As well. <laughs> and then this is just CDC that I waste CDC off, cut and put in a bag. <clears throat> Just dub there on. And then just come behind the come behind there. One through on it. So I've come one through the middle mm -hmm. and then back to the front. Finish and cut, yeah. That's a little deer olive upright. Any questions? I should think you've got to make every turn of thread count on these small flies. Yeah, I try to, um, even when I'm tying nymphs, I try to tie the tail in with one turn, the ribbon with the next turn. So I'm doing, not building the back end up too thick. And the same with dries. If you put too many turns in, your body gets too thick and too bulky. Well, that's another little fly. Can you all see that? Yes. Yeah. Do they still make your voice, Tim? Pardon? Do they still make your voice? Yeah, it's new, this one. It's not okay. old. I, I don't know how, how long they've been out. Been out a couple of years now, I think. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I like it as well, to be honest. Yeah, I, I do like the look of it. And, yeah. and it, makes, it makes it look as though it makes the job look very easy as well, by the looks of it. I, I think it's more or less a copy of the Waldron, I think. Yeah, yeah. More or less. But yeah, it's all right. I like it. Yeah. I mean, it has got in there, there's three ridges for bigger hooks. I, yeah. I never use them, to be honest. I don't, yeah. I don't know, no need to, to be fair. That's an HMH, isn't it? Yeah, the HMH. It's the. Uh... Gareth, what's the name of this one? Rotary is there, something like that? Yeah. Yeah, something like that, yeah. Something like Rotary it is, yeah. But I find it's all right, yeah. Yeah, it looks nice. Right, I'll do... I'll do one more little emerger, and then I'll tie a couple... Um, This has been a good little emerger for me, to be fair, and simple. We can, we can all tie these, it's simple. It is a size 20, but you could tie it in 16s, 14s, 18s. And it's another simple little fly. You need them as simple as possible when you lose a few. This is a 
again, it's an LSD too, and so is 20 Droy. And the voice. I'll leave the red, I'll leave the red. Actually, I'll use tap. Beyond the eye. Down four or five turns. Cut your waist off. And then come back up two or three turns. And you want for the for this this size you're gonna want two two CDC turns. And when I when I stack my CDC, I'll put one concave up and one concave down. Line your tips up. And this I'd I'd make probably the length of the hook and a quarter. Pinch and tie. Tape your CDC again. And then just take your thread down. just before the bend. <clears throat> and we've got an olive strip quill. Same again, cut your waist off. Place him on the bottom of the hook under there and up around and then just bring your thread back to the back of the CDC a tiny bit of a tiny bit of uh, super glue And then touching turns, bring your core back up. <clears throat> Tie that in. Cut your waist off. And then just get yourself some pine squirrel. It's only to act as legs, the pine squirrel. And the same with the ackle. And then just dub it on a small amount, not too not too tight. If you if you put it on too tight, Doesn't open up like legs. So you want a couple of turns behind. Grab your CDC, pull it up. A couple in front. And then we'll finish. And just pull off any axis, excess. And you can tie them in, that's a 20, but you can tie them. You can, you can varnish the quill if you want. I don't tend to do it, to be honest. I'll just leave them natural. A 
it takes seconds to tie if you lose it or a fish damage it, it don't matter really. But that's you can do them in that's an olive emerge, you can do them. And you can also do that in a pearly butt one if you wanted, the same as the other one, just put a bit of pearl round and then do the same again. It's just a different hook. You all see that one? Yeah. Any questions? No, lovely job. Yeah, thank you. How are we doing for time, Deck? All right. Yeah, we got loads of time. It's unlimited. You always say that, Nick. <laughs> that's, that's to keep you tired. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> right, I'll do. Um, I'll do a couple of nymphs. Uh, This is one of my favourite trout nymphs. Right. The hook is, you don't have to use these, but it's a sure hold and it's a size 18. The voice, and I've got a three a three mil copper bead, and you've all I always do this. Everybody's seen me do it before. We pull a bead back, very super. Keep it away from the eye, though. Push your bead forward, and done. Tan thread beyond the bead. Halfway. And then just come back up a little. Um, my tail is cocked really on. Again, five or six strands. Line them up, pull them off. I just wet them just to keep them all up together. Put your pull your tail to length. Get there, one underneath, pull it tight, cocks them up. Cut your waist off. And then we want um uh, where some fine copper wire. And you'll see what I mean now about bulking the back end up. So you got your copper wire, one turn, leave. And then pearl miler again. This is a medium. And tie your pearl miler with a copper side facing up. Copper side facing up, and it needs to be on the top of the hook. And then you want a natural pheasant tail. 
cut yourself three fibers. So I've only gone around the hook once completely with the three things. And then tie your pheasant tail fibers in. Up to the bead. And just tape the body a little. Get your pheasant tail fibers in your rack pliers. If you feel confident enough, use your hand, but I use me. And then just touching turns, bring your pheasant tail fibers up to the back of the bead. And tie them off. Cut your waist off. And then your pearly mile out, you've got the copper facing up at the moment. And when you pull it over on the back, the big peacock up. And then just put one turn behind the bead. And then rib in open turns over the top. And you'll probably get three or four turns up to the back of the bead. You can leave that copper wire there now. Cut this off. And then just top lock your copper wire. And then just rotate it and it'll break off. And then we'll finish the thread. And then this is um, Techstream and it's micro flush. You, you, you know, you're. Um, Globroid. It's the same as Globroid, but it's half the thickness as Globroid. And tie that in. And cut your waist off. And this is just acting as a, a Globroid collar. And then we just will finish the same. A little tip for whip finishing. I haven't done it, but a little tip for whip finishing with Globroid and this is to put some wax on it because it does come undone Globroid sometimes, or a bit, little bit of varnish. But wax, if you put wax on the on the rub the wax through it, there it'll stick, and it it uh, whip finishes better with wax on. But that's a nice little trout nymph that works well. Everybody see that? Any questions? Just got a flashback. You see the flashback? Another one is a... This is a, a red tag. You all, we all know what red tag is. And that one. And this is a size six, 16 with a 3 mil, a 3 mil um, tungsten bead in silver. Very good, so push forward.
thread beyond the bead. And just run it down halfway. And the tag is glow bright number five. And just run yourself a piece off. And then just fold it in half. And then in half again. And then in half again. And then just tie in, pinch and loop on the top and tie in. Cut this end off. And then don't make the tag too long. You don't want them too long at all. Just at the back of the bend of the hook, snip it off. It's only a trigger point. You've got the rib is silver wire. Place there. The silver wire rib and the body, if I can find it. Just add, just add it somewhere. Where we'll put that. I'll put it somewhere. Body is scruffy dubbing, and it's a, uh, a natural, it's like a light tan. It's it's a bit, you could use air mask, it's sim similar to be fair. This is just a little bit finer. I'll put your dubbing on, a little needle at the end, and then just tie in your body and tape it as you come up. You can take this more or less to the back of the bead. And then your rib. Just bring your rib up. Tie your rib off, break your wire off. Right, this the cut well thorax, the collar, I'll split the thread. I'll just run my needle up and down the thread and it'll flatten it out. Keep your finger in between your thread. And this is scruffy dubbing again in black. Just place, place it in between the thread. Pull your finger out and then twist it. And you'll see it twist up. Just 
just keep stroking it back. And then we finish. And just get some Velcro. And rub it up. You can and you can do that in any any coloured dubbins, you can mix them up. That's just one I use, that's a little red tag. Any quick can you see that? Yeah, very good. Any questions? No? No. You can still use these flies for drilling, but I do use these those few for trout, those ones. Do you think the colour of the bead makes any difference, Tim? I used to use loads of different colours and I stopped it. I only use copper, silver, gold, uh, copper, silver, gold, and black. That's all I use now. I hardly use any other colours. Well, the painted ones, it comes off after a few trips, doesn't yeah, it? That's, yeah, that's what I mean. If, especially on the fleece, like on the deal somewhere, you run through there, there's no colour on it in 10 minutes. Yeah. No, I, I, um, it's hard to say when the colour matters. It's hard to say. I mean, we all know you could get through with a silver bead and catch nothing and go through with a copper bead, but it could be the drift. More so yeah. than the, nobody knows really, do they? No. We all say, oh, that's caught cool, that, that's a good fly, that's a good fly, but sometimes it's just the drift. Yeah, yeah. That, uh... yeah. Funny how one fly will work for one person, but it won't work for somebody else. Yeah. Yeah. But then again, sometimes it's the drift. I'm a bugger for using like tippet on nymphs because I think you get a better movement in your tippet than, than using thick tippet. Some people will say, oh, six pound tippet, six pound tippet. But the thicker the tippet, the less movement you've got. Mm. That's my theory anyway, but we've all got our own theories. Yeah. What, what you just said, Tim, about the colour of the bead. Yeah. Does that apply to the ribbon as well? Um, you know, you got silver wire, you got copper wire, you got gold wire. There again, nobody knows today. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's just, I think it's us that make, I think it's us that make it makes them look pretty, not not for for us and not the fish. Well, the first job of the fly is to get you to put on the end of the tippet, yeah. and the second job is for you to catch a fish. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, I think it's us that make them pretty more than. Some people say flies work, this will work and that works. And like you've just said, some people say it don't work for them, but is it is it the drift or is it how they're fishing or no, nobody knows, do they? I, I, you, you, everybody's got their own flies that work, and we always get to the same ones in the same in the same there's spot. There's in the there's in that the, many different variants, isn't there? You know, so yeah, yeah. And how many times do you get to the box and you, you pick the same one out every week? <laughs> yes. uh, right, this is a, a, what I'd use as a point fly. And it's a size 14 and it's a 4 mil copper bead. But yeah. Super glue pushing forward. 
I don't know why, but the copper beads seem to stick better than the silvers, always for some reason, with the glue. Certainly again behind the bead. They need to be simple because you lose so many of them. Uh, tail, cock the Leon again. Pull them off, five, six fibers. Wet them, keep them in position. Pull your tail, one underneath. I tend to tie my tails in London and pull them to the length that I want them to. It's everybody to their own. Uh, and the pearly mylar, I'll do it this time I'll do it with um, the copper showing out instead of the, the pearl. So this time we'll, we'll try it the other way around. What's this one called, Tim? Pardon? What's this one called? The fly? Yeah. Oh, it's just an, uh, a pearl rib nymph. That's all it is, pearly rib nymph. So I've tied me ribbon back down to the back. Uh, I've just added some more. And points, uh, sorry, this is fox squirrel, where I've cut off a skin. And I'll, just, I'll put the... Fox squirrel's not, it's not the easiest to, to dub. So what I do, I'll put the under fur and the the coarse fur together, put them in a blender, and it just seems to dub better than when it's just pulling it off. So I cut some of the under fur off with it. So you dub dub that, dub that, and then just start at the back of the tail and work your way up, tapering it. And you'll see this is very, very spiky. And then get your, your rib. And then just what I do, one all the way around at the back, just beyond the tail. And then come up. And just tie your rib off. Cut your waist off. And then this, is, you, again, you can use any colour, but this is just a bit of spectra for the um, thorax. You could use orange, you could use any colour you want. Just dub yourself a bit of dubbing on and then just make yourself a collar behind there. finish and again just get your not too rough and that's that's a point fly I'd use that with I'd use that as a point fly and then probably that as a dropper together 
So I'd have that on the dropper and there on the point. Any questions? Would you catch more on the point fly than the dropper or? Uh, it, depend, it depends where you want, where, where you're fishing or what runs you're fishing, but you, you would probably catch more on your drop, drop or fly. And then if it was cold, you'd catch more on your point fly. Yeah. Cold. Yeah. They'd be on the bottom if it was cold. And then if they get a bit more active, they'd come up for your dropper fly. Hmm. Uh, Depends on the places as well. Brilliant. How's that, Nick? Perfect. Yeah, very good. Those bo bottom bouncers, they, they'll keep them in the right place as well. Yeah, well, that's what it's for. It's, it's just a slow... If the water's moving quick, you need to slow that fly down. So you need an heavier fly to slow, slow your drop of fly from moving through too quick. Yeah. How, how, how much line between your point and your dropper then? Um, I usually use about 18 inches. Yeah. To my point and my dropper. So about, about that. And I only ever use two flies. Some people use three, I only ever use two. And yeah. I only ever use two because I, I lose less if I do that. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, that's right. That is. If you, um, I mean, we all know you. We all get snagged on the bottom. Yeah. Especially, especially grayling fishing. You you lose a lot of flies grayling fishing. The bloody Welsh rivers are worse than anywhere. I think. That's where the big fish are, though, isn't it? That's the. Can't we get it? Um, you at the weekend, Gareth? Is he gone? Is he I am, mate. Yeah, on the ass close days, I think. I mean, where, whereabouts? Uh, on, your, on your water. One place around Chainbridge. That's oh, right. Yeah. Uh, the next near Abergavenny. All right. I think me and Rob's uh, going down on Saturday. Nice. Whereabouts? I think so. Um, probably Abergavenny, just up from Abergavenny. Where went the other week? Where was I? Uh, you know... Um, oh, where you were the other week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. Yeah. I got gotcha. <laughs> you. Might go there, or we might go up to um, the one by the solar panels. I got gotcha. you. Yeah, nice. Might, might go up there. It depends on the weather and what's happening, but I think there's no range of it. The on the weather, just it just said... Um, Maybe rain Monday, but it might not. Yeah, we need the bloody water, though, don't we? Oh, mm. terrible. terrible. 